Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and dazzle you with breathtaking cinematics. Looking for top five entertainment in just 40 minutes? Then park it right here and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. <laughs> it's great to have you here, and it looks like it's a lovely day in the bay. We are looking in at the subject of today's build, and that subject is really the bay itself. We are going to be building the Bay Pass Tunnel. Yes, a brand new tunnel that's going to come from this island out here and submerge underneath the bay and reconnect over on this side here. Now you notice this freeway has already sunken down a little bit. We did that in one of our last episodes. And, you know, it was a bit of foreshadowing coming out of the Crestwind Cape episode that we did, we did last week. So uh, we were going to take advantage of that this week. Now, why do we have to do that? If you may recall, the original map comes with a bridge that connects from the island out here back to the mainland across the way. I didn't really care for that bridge. And so we constructed this new freeway. We built this back in episode one, just as a connection to get us all the way out from this island and across Roughneck Isle, and then back over to the mainland over there. And now we still have a need for a bay crossing, and I want to take the form of a tunnel to make that happen. So that's where the Bay Pass Tunnel comes into play. It's going to be a big build, and it's going to test our skills in terms of the, the, the new mechanics of CS2, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, well, I just threw a lot at you guys, so we got to jump right in and get started. With that as a backdrop, let's do this. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to prep the bottom of the bay. And that sounds kind of strange, but it's something that we need to do in order to decrease the depth of the tunnel that we need to go and that, that we need to build. And let me just take you up over here. You can see I've got a little obstruction set up there in the middle of the bay. And I did that as just kind of a test to see how deep the bay needs to be. Now, it turns out the bay doesn't need to be very deep, but I also want you to watch what happens as this ship passes over this obstruction. You'll see it start to rock quite a bit. There it goes. So when you see that, it's not because the, the bay is too shallow, but actually it's because it's too abrupt of a change from the top to the bottom. The ships behave a little funny like that. And what I found out is, as I was kind of just doing some playing around, was that if you come back over here and you can see the sea level, the white line represents the sea level. If I pick a point that is 12 of these, these black lines, I, I think they might be meters, I don't know, underneath the sea level, if I grab this height here, this elevation, I grab that one and I come back out here and I apply that to my, uh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, apply that to this. And in fact, let's create a bigger brush. I'm gonna pause the game real quick, like, let's do this. And let's go 150 and I'm just gonna grab that elevation now and I'm gonna push that out. And by pushing that out, I'm really making this part of the bay a lot shallower. And the ships should still have plenty of clearance to come through there. But now what I need to do is I need to come in here and just change the elevation or the, um, you know, the amount of pitch as it approaches this underwater obstruction. And what you'll see is that the ships should then, by and large, pass smoothly over the top of it. Let's go ahead and start the game and see what happens. There you go. See, now it'll drop off this cliff. Watch, there, see? So although the, the bay was at a constant depth all throughout the obstruction, it was that sheer drop off that I think just messes with the game mechanics for ships. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this in, this, this elevation, this depth, if you will, all the way from shore to shore over here. All right, sit tight. Now you can see, it, it's, it's, I've changed the elevation, but you can't really tell from above, can you? It looks like it's the same depth all the way across. And now what we can do is quick before the ship gets there, I'll pause the game and I'm gonna change this, like, you know, the pitch, if you will, again, on this approach. If I come in here and just kind of you know, do this sort of a thing, where we're gonna smooth it out and we're gonna grab this deal and you know, we're just gonna soften all of this up underneath the water while still leaving a huge plateau underneath the water. What that should allow us to do is have the ships pass over this, you know, underwater raised elevation. I know that sounds kind of strange to say, but underwater raised elevation without rocking. Let's just see what happens here. All right, we're gonna jump in here and take a look at this guy. Yeah. 
And just like that, he seamlessly passed over the underwater increase in elevation. So I think we've got our first part completed. Nice. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, don't hate me for it, I'm gonna blow up this freeway interchange that's way over here. And the reason I wanna do that is because I feel like I need to do some rework in this space. As you recall, Gateway Village was episode two that we built. And we put in this beautiful immigration district, not gonna make any changes to that, but I've got all this farmland that's sitting in here as well. And I wanna make sure that I, one, maximize the use of the farmland, and you can see how that yellow comes all the way over here. And two, I wanna create a freeway that has got the same width. If you look at these, you know, the, the width between the, I guess it's the northbound and southbound directions and compare that over here, they're at a different width. And I think by doing so, if I change kind of the, the approach angle, if I, if I start the interchange in here and change that approach angle to come over to here, I think it's gonna allow for more development on this island. It'll create a much smoother approach here. And also hopefully will allow me to start my decline or my descent down down to sea level right on top of this uh, this cross street this heather street and then ultimately get myself under the water here at a nice gentle decline to intersect with the freeway on the other side so sit tight we got a lot of work to do in rebuilding that interchange Now we've got ourselves an interchange that's going to really meet the demand of the future. We've got, you know, two lanes that are coming in off of the existing freeway. We expanded it. We relocated a little bit too. And you can see we've got four lane freeways that are making its way all the way down to the water. And I also threaded in that rail line coming from our train station right in between the two and it makes its way right down the middle so that as we make our way through and under the water, we'll have a rail line that connects us with from Gateway Village all the way into our downtown. So that should be really nice. You know, the other thing you probably saw me do is off, off camera, or I should say, as I was building out is I took down our lumber industry and I took down all of this agriculture. Now you may be asking why I did that, but I wanted to you know, rethread the rail lines here and just kind of set things up for greater success for the future. We've got a fair amount of fertile land that still sits in here that I can come in and, and do a little bit more yeah, you know, maybe more decoratively and certainly more efficiently. And then obviously we've got quite a few trees back in here. I want to kind of redo that because as you recall, we did that back when we did episode two, Gateway Village, and I was still just learning all the mechanics of the industry. So I think we set ourselves up for future success and the ability to yeah, kind of take a do over there and, and really make it nice. Okay, on to the next step. The next thing I want to do is I want to come in here and redo our shipping lanes. And the reason I want to do that is because 
we've got a shipping lane that kind of runs right through the middle of this, which is not so bad. I think we're ultimately going to get underneath that. But then I've got this funky bottleneck in here. And then as I mentioned, you know, in a previous episode or maybe earlier, we're going to do a cargo harbor in here in the future. And I'd like to take our shipping lanes and kind of route them out here so that it's a little bit more of a scenic route coming into the bay where you can see the yacht club out there and, and then make a junction where I can branch off to the cargo harbor over here and so forth and, and just get rid of this bottleneck. So let's pause the game and then we'll start tackling that. There we go. Now we've got shipping lanes kind of you know, reoriented, make it a little bit more of a scenic route coming back in through here. And the residents of the yacht club can see the cruise ships a little bit more close up. And then we've got a nice little access point for our cargo harbor in the future episode. And then we've got a nice big shipping lane that runs through the middle here. And we should be able to you know, sneak by that with our tunnel coming under. So I feel a lot better about those shipping lanes. On to the next item. The next thing we need to do is we need to come out and we need to build our big platforms. And I'm going to really over-exaggerate things right now. I'm going to grab an elevation that's about three lines, one, two, three lines above sea level. And I'm going to just start pushing this all out. And I'm going to create a huge platform out here, much bigger than we're going to need. And then we won't have to worry about coming back later on and messing with this. But then we can, we can peel back all of the stuff that we don't need and we'll be left with a beautiful, uh, beautiful tunnel entrance. And we'll do the same thing over here on the other side. We're just going to come up here and start building that out as well. There we go. We've got a couple big landing pads in place now, and that should make our job of building out the uh, tunnel a lot easier. Let's just check and see where we are in relation to that shipping lane. Yeah, we've still got plenty of room there. Okay, so now that we've built that, that big platform out, I want to come back in here and I want to use the same excavation technique that I used in our prior episode in Crestwind Cape. And where that has me coming in here and just digging this out, kind of trenching that out a little bit to get this level down here just below sea level. And the reason we want to do that is because we're going to be using um, some sidewalks as retaining walls. And I want to make sure that I have a little valley for those things to reside in so that when we uh, have our, our sidewalks you know, sitting on the outside acting as a seawall, then we can come in and um, have them closer to water level. All right, so let's come out here from the edge of this one. And you can see I've got this set at two and a half meters and I've got a four unit offset in the toggle parallel mode. And we're just going to bring this out 48 meters. And that's a good place to start because then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to come out and do this there. So you've got those kind of parallel looking shapes out there. Now, what this is, is this internal wall will be the wall that is the support mechanism as this road and rail line starts to decline its way down into the uh, into the earth. And then this exterior wall, this will be our seawall. And we'll you know ultimately come in and peel all this back and you'll have you'll be left with an exposed seawall over here. The next thing I need to consider is I want to leave some room for some shops and entertainment out here, kind of on a pier that would give you visibility to downtown, Crestwind Cape, uh, and, and Hickory Heights in the background, and, and, and the cruise ships that sail by. So I want to come in with a two-lane highway, and I want to take that and you know, come from out here, just sneak in right about there, and keep it close to the exterior seawall, and then just drive out. Let's just start with 64 meters for now. We'll do the same thing on this other side. And that's going to be really nice because we'll be able to use those to you know, have them to be fun access roads. We're going to draw a line out here that comes out about yeah, maybe 300 meters. We can always change that later. But let's start by going out 300 meters on both sides. And then I need to take an elevation that's going to be quite a bit below sea level. Now, if you remember, the seabed sits in here at... Um, I think it's about 12 of these lines, these black lines down underneath. So I need to get to about 22, 23 lines underneath the uh, white line in order to get far enough down to get under the channel. So let's grab our shift terrain tool and we're going to depress this down. I think we got just about there, didn't we? Let's take a look. You've got a major black line about halfway down. You got another major black line. Then you got one, two, I think we're about there, three. So let's use that as our, our finishing point. And now I got to gently slope all of our freeways down and, and our rail line, of course. 
And then we're going to grab our freeway and we're just going to drive our four lane, four lane freeway right on down to about here. And then I'll come back and mirror that up on the other side, bring that up to here. And then let's do the same thing with our rail line. And from there, that's when I need to really start creating tunnels. Now I can come in with my freeways and I can start building tunnels. And now we've got a tunnel wall that's in there. We've got all of those set up and I can delete these lanes. And then it actually creates a better, smoother approach down the, down the ramp. Now we can finish it off by bringing this out and then across and into there. How's that look? A little lumpy, a little bumpy, but all in all, not too bad. All right, so with all that in place, now we're gonna finish off the end of our pier. Now we've got a really great space in here where this is going to be, we'll peel back the, the water into here and into here. And we've got this big landing spot up here. And let's take out these, these walls here that are in these spaces. They were just there to help us make our build. And you can see what that shape of that pier is going to look like now. So the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how to get roads up in here. And remember, we've got this road running up in, in this space here. This is a little highway two-lane highway. We'll just go ahead and continue that on up into this direction here. Let's just put it there for now. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, that's what we want. Two-lane, two-way. Okay, cool. And now I got to figure out how to get that connected into this freeway here. That gives us, you know, zonable squares out here on which to build some buildings. Yeah, I think what I want to do is here. Let's let's dezone this, and then we're gonna blow that away. I want to slide this park over so the circular area is centered up with that train line underneath it. Yeah, that probably looks a little cooler. And then, you know, the other thing I think I need to put into this space is some parking. Let's do that. If I put parking in. How close can I get to this park? We'll put parking in there right next to it because you need a place to park and then maybe this shop just becomes a smaller shop maybe it's can you do two by six yeah let's do that and it'll be a little smaller shop just really kind of a convenience store if you will off the freeway we need to come in here and we need to uh, make sure that this is safe this outer wall is safe and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take some gravel roads and I'm going to create these little bumpers. In fact, if you've ever seen, you know, like a bridge, sometimes bridge pilings have these big round circular guards against impact. So I'll show you what I mean. And those will act as kind of uh, barriers to keep a ship from coming in and impacting here. Okay, let's jump on over to the other side now. We've got some work to do on this side. This one should be a lot easier because it's not going to be as elaborate as this pier is over here. It's really just going to be something simple like I'm going to take this out and I'm going to slightly curve it back to head off into this direction out here towards this, you know, to, towards this corner here so that I can line up my freeways as they come in through here. So now we've got this neat little kind of serpentine area that's going to come through here and, and it's going to deliver us a little bit more elegant type of a curve that comes through there. Next thing I want to do is I want to grab the elevations that are a little further down. Oh, 
oh, this is going to be kind of neat. So I can grab this freeway and let's see here. Parallel mode, one apart. And I'm going to do a continuous curve. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, yeah. I think I like the look of that. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get our freeway. And I'm going to run that. That's at negative 30 right now. So let's just see. How does that come out? We have a freeway under the water. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I like the way that that's shaping up. I think this is going to be pretty neat. Okay, so this feels like a really good place for us to jump into a detailing time lapse. I've got a lot of work I want to do in this space. I'm going to have to peel back all the, you know, the outer edges of these um, these pier walls, and I'll probably put in some of these little bumpers out here as well, just to make sure that our, you know, our, our pier on the northern side of the shore is is a little safe. And then I want to put in some other assets, maybe some decorations. Um, you know, I'll do some plantings and flowers and try and smooth out some of these rough edges as well just to give it a much cleaner look all right that's that's you know what we're going to tackle next so why don't you just sit back relax enjoy the time lapse and let's reconnect here after that
<laughs> All right, welcome back. I give you the Bay Pass Tunnel. And this was quite the build. It was a lot of fun, a massive infrastructure project that we needed to increase our productivity and our aesthetics in Pangasus Bay. There is gonna be a lot to look at here, so let's just go ahead and jump right on in. If you recall, we started off with this interchange. And this interchange was you know, really kind of needed because we needed to move from being a little too close to the one down the way over to here. And it also changed the entire trajectory of our freeway. We just slid everything over just a little bit to the right and it made for a much better approach, I think, to the, uh, to the tunnel entrance. Now we decorated this up with a lot of wildflowers and such along the ridge line here, planted some trees as a barrier. Put in some shrubs and some trees here just to add some definition and some decorative uh, plantings out here in the center island just to give it a little bit more. I like doing this little diagonal bush technique here in the uh, sides of the freeway too, just to kind of soften down that, that rough dirt look and just make it a little bit more clean looking. Now as we continue along the freeway, we get to the first of one of our fast pass toll sections. And I thought, you know, with a massive infrastructure project like this, and the amount of traffic that you have, likely there would be some sort of a toll process. And so I built these big toll booths in here. They're fast pass so that you don't have to slow down or stop. You can just pass right on through and your vehicle is automatically uh, recorded as passing and you, know, you get a bill sent in the mail or electronically. And then we just continue right along here to our south tunnel entrance. And this one really turned out neat. I did a lot of decorative work in this space here, and you can see that. We made our pier come out here and then flare at the end and then circle back around with some beautiful decorative plantings out here. We put a nice park in, some shops, a couple of little stores in here. And then I also added this radio mast out here because it seemed to me that ships passing through might need to be in contact with a, you know, maybe it's a channel master or something like that. And speaking of channel masters, you gotta have these towers, one on the south shore and then one on the north shore there, just to keep an eye on all the ships passing through, make sure that no, no accidents happen. One of the things I uh, really tried to mask here was there's a you know, mechanic involved in CS2 that once you start building down below water level, sometimes you get these water artifacts and you'll see those creep in from time to time. Rest assured, there's no actual water there. It's just the way that the water is built. And so I used a lot of these covered pedestrian walkways to kind of cover up the entrance to the tunnel here just to shield us from some of those water artifacts and create a nice more, I don't know, polished formal approach. We put these big bumpers out here in the water, and I think those turned out really neat. You know, a couple little shrubs and bushes out here, which would not be uncommon for, you know, maybe some dirt out there that's gonna allow some wild plants to grow in the space out there. So I think that turned out nicely. And then of course, as you dive into that tunnel and make your way across the bay, you come out on this side. And this side was our existing freeway that was, you know, kind of sneaking down into here. And we made this nice serpentine exit or entrance, I should say, with, a, again, some covers coming on in through here. And then this thicket of trees, if you will, that gently rises back up to the water level with a lot of shrubs and bushes that are planted along on kind of the main exterior part of the, you know, of the enclosure. It uh, brings you right out into the Crestwind Cape part of town. And I think this is a really nice addition. It's a big infrastructure play without being an eyesore for the folks here in Crestwind. So you, you look at that, it's really not all that noticeable. Quite lovely. Now we've got our second toll plaza over here, which was you know, servicing the cars that are coming in from the northbound side of town as well. And that serves as a really nice entrance back into our tunnel. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up our episode for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. This one was pretty neat, and I love the way it turned out. Now, just as a reminder, we are a new channel. And if you saw something that you liked today, be sure to leave us a comment down below in the comment section. We would love to hear from you. And while you're at it, chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest here in Pangasas Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. All right, well, I'm going to bid you a fond farewell. And with that... Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening, and good night.